while normally that's not my favorite, I do feel like that is an improvement over the screaming. Yeah, the screaming is hard. That makes me sad. Screaming Dead Lady is not my fave. But it could be like, you know, like a dimension, like time slip kind of thing where she thinks you're the fucking ghost. And she's like, oh, fucking ghost and screams. Like I- maybe she's not in pain or anything. She's just scared too. That's a perfectly reasonable explanation. That makes me feel better about it. You know? Well, I'm glad that that helps you. <laughs> Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Cassie. Hi, creepy people. Hello. If you're new to our creepy little corner of the world, this is PNW Haunts and Homicides, where we chat about true crime, the paranormal, and anything spooky, kooky, weird, and creepy in the Pacific Northwest. Yes, and sometimes we very individually overpronounce uh, specific letters. Because we don't want there to be any confusion. (laughs) (laughs) I just don't want to slur my words already. I know. She's had like three whole sips of wine. So you got to be careful. Yeah. We also do a tarot reading at the end of every episode for a little bit of deeper insight into our topic for the day. So make sure you stick around if you're into that. Which obviously at this point you should be. You will be. We're converting you. We're trying. Yeah. We've got a really cute altar today. We do. Super special and cute, but we won't tell you what it is yet. We're going to wait. Oh, okay. You don't think I can tell? Well, I mean, but they're listening right now and they might not know yet. Oh, you guys can't (laughs) see it. (laughs) They can't see it yet. (sighs) Welcome to my autobiography. Line one. Hi, my name is Cassie. And I'm a fucking tree hugger from Portland, Oregon. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's true. That's the truest thing you've said so far today. I wrote ha ha after that in my note in case you didn't laugh. Okay. So I would remember that it was supposed to be funny. (laughs) And then you would just giggle to yourself and be like, ha ha, fuck you. (laughs) So I wrote that because I'm starting this episode off by nerding out on trees. (laughs) <laughs> dendrophilia. Is that what it's called? Uh, well, okay, listen, I don't know. Hold on. Is that Maybe. like boning a tree, though? I th- yeah, well, that's why I didn't want to. <laughs> I think so. I maybe don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't know that it. I, I don't know that it means that you're actually having sex with the tree. Let's we're going to find hmm. out together. Um, literally means love of trees. So the term may sometimes refer to a paraphilia in which people are sexually attracted or sexually aroused by trees. Hmm. So it may or may not involve sexual contact or penetration. (laughs) I mean, you know how I feel about wood. I I feel like you've made your thoughts very clear. (laughs) I would never want to make love to a tree unless I had the tree's consent. I feel like that's a little bit harder to get a tree's consent. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that could be a real sticking point. Yeah. But, you know, people do talk to trees. So maybe someday. We'll see. I'll keep you guys updated. Yeah. (laughs) Caitlin, do you know what a heritage tree is? Uh, Is that where people keep their family log books? No. (laughs) They are officially plaqued up trees that are preserved due to their unique size, age, historical, or horticultural significance. Ooh, horticulture. Horticultural. Ooh. I said that word right the first time. I just want everybody to know. <laughs> oh <my laughs> I was very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> As of about a year ago, there are 328 heritage trees in Portland, representing 134 different tree species. Species? Species. Species. That number may be a little different now since they do add new trees every year. And some of the heritage trees were destroyed by the, quote, extreme weather events of 2022. Which I was like, do we have extreme weather? I don't remember. Yeah. No, we the last couple of winters, we've had a ton of 
falling and or uh, otherwise damaged trees. Yeah. Do you remember when you drove up here shortly after the big snowstorm? I remember like yeah. this year, but I don't remember two years ago. It's been, it's been like that, like every year <laughs> since basically 2020. I just went ahead and blocked everything out. It's oh, fine. yeah. I mean, it's the strongest policy. It's, the, <laughs> it's that that's what keeps you safe. That's what helps you sleep at night. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't work for me. But. <laughs> anyway, about trees. It's a lot of fucking trees. It is a lot of trees. Yes. And why are we talking about trees today? I don't know. Is it going to be a ghost tree? Is it going to be a true crime about a tree fucker? Maybe. We'll see where this is headed. (laughs) I'm very anxious. (laughs) Well, one of Portland's oldest and still used cemeteries is also an arboretum. Located in the southeast, it is Portland's second largest arboretum behind Hoyt, oh. which is huge. It's huge. So big. It is also listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Okay. Yeah. There are more than 700 trees of 67 species on just over 30 acres of the cemetery. Wow. Yeah. It's big. That's so many trees and it's in the city so two of these 700 trees are heritage trees but one of them is extra special because the cemetery slash arboretum was lovingly named lone fir in 1866 after the douglas fir Uh the heritage tree that's there well there's like three of them there but that's the one it's named after Okay. (laughs) Which was the only tree in sight. (laughs) Get it? Lone. Lone fur. Who's the only one? (laughs) I was like, that's, she means something. I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. Clearly, she means something beyond this. Nope. Nope. Okay. There's just one. I got it. One tree. It's uh, a single. Yes. And you're probably thinking, yeah, but didn't you just say? There's a fuck ton of trees here. Yeah. Also, I, yeah, I think that's where I got lost. Yeah. Yes, I did. Couldn't see the forest for the trees. <laughs> <laughs> Through the tree. <laughs> the one tree. Yeah. But the arboretum grew in kind of the same way that the cemetery did. Very nice. So we're going to go on a little journey. Okay. In 1846, E-more, it's E-M-M-O-R, E-more, E-more, yeah. E-more. Emor Stevens was buried on his son's family farm when the farm was sold to Colburn Barrel in 1854. He made a promise to maintain Emor's final resting place. Okay. He kept his word, but under some unfortunate circumstances. No. In the same year he purchased the land, two of Colburn's friends were among 24 passengers that passed away in a steamship explosion. Yeah. Oh, God. That's got to be one of the most horrific ways to die. I imagine yeah. I'm not going to look into that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't nope. like go deep into what happened. Uh, yeah, you'll have to do that on your own time. Mm-mm. But it was a big deal. <laughs> yeah. He turned 10 acres of his land into a cemetery for the burial of his friends. And I believe some of the other passengers as well. Oh, yeah. Even naming it Mount Crawford after one of them. Crawford Dobbins. These names. I know. Colburn, what was his Barrel. Yeah, I mean, Crawford Dobbins or Dobbins, but I think it's Dobbins. Dobbins, yeah. yeah. Wow. Mount Crawford grew to 30 acres by 1866 and was named Lone Fir Cemetery by Colburn's wife, Aurelia, A-U-R-E-L-I-A. Yeah, I would say Aurelia. Aurelia. Yeah. And there are now 25,000 people and counting laid to rest here. That's so many. It's kind of a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Just right in the city. Cool. (laughs) So just like the lone man, Emor Stevens, that started it all, with time, the lone fir was joined by more and more trees buried in the soil of the cemetery. Okay. That's 
fine. The trees are good. Or are they? Is this like a <laughs> happening sort of a scenario? I don't know. You'll have to wait and find out. <laughs> Emor's son, James, and his wife, Elizabeth, are also buried here with a rather unique headstone. Oh, that no. I meant to pull up before this, but I forgot. Why do I feel like I'm not going to like this? <laughs> Wh- okay, let me, let me get the close up. Why? It's very sweet. Oh, I'm sure I'll like it much better close up. It's very sweet. Said no one ever. Ugh. So it is a gravestone uh, with two people carved into it. Um, it's creepy, but it's also very sweet. <laughs> uh, they just wanted to be remembered together forever. I mean, I sincerely doubt I will ever forget that. It's very haunting looking. Yes. Yeah. Very I haunting, haunted, <laughs> all of the above. On this very unique haunting gravestone is an inscription that everyone is kind of obsessed with. Okay. So it says, here we lie by consent after 57 years, two months and two days, sojourning through life, awaiting nature's immutable laws to return us back to the elements of the universe of which we were first composed. Okay, I think that's beautiful. And normally this is a word I like, but the the consent part that I don't know why, but that's concerning me. That was confusing are, to me too. Are there unconsenting graves people in I, It's funny you say that. I no. <laughs> um no. But at the time their headstone was put up, I, I I don't think so. I don't think that's why they put it on there. But that's interesting you say that. Yeah, so I don't know what the consent thing is all about. Maybe it's just like like we wanted to end up here together. I mean, yeah, but like consent is, depending on the context, to me that just says like, okay, sure. Like (laughs) I need like we enthusiastically consent. We should change the inscription to enthusiastic consent. (laughs) I'm really stressed out. But James passed away two years after his wife. And during that time, it is said that he would visit their shared burial plot and imagine holding Elizabeth's warm, loving hand again. So he I don't know if if the the statues of them were there at the time. Yeah, I guess that's an interesting point. I'm like, why do we have to use like these words that it's like they did like a Mad Libs? (laughs) <laughs> of words that would just make me upset. Like why 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 do we have to describe her hand specifically as warm? I mean, I put that in there. He didn't put that in there. <laughs> oh my god. I well, he I don't know why that's creeping me out so much and now my toes are cold. So. I put it like that because I I didn't want anyone to think he was imagining holding her passed away her cold hand. Dead hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was remembering okay. her as she was living. Okay. But he did specifically say he imagined holding her hand again, which was so fucking sweet. God damn it. (laughs) God, Chris, why don't you ever tell me that you imagined holding my cold, dead hand? (laughs) Maybe after today he will. Yeah. My hands are always cold. So So we're going to go on and talk about some of the other people who are buried here. Harriet Hattie Redmond is laid to rest at Lone Fur. She was a leader in the community, being involved in the Colored Women's Council and the women's suffrage campaigns, which were successful, and had he registered to vote in 1912. Good for her. Yeah. And I did read that she put her uh, occupation down as hairdresser, and I just thought that was so fucking cute. Cute. It was really cute. Cute. Adam Gus Waterford, Portland's first African-American firefighter. <gasps> Stop it. Yeah. Well, and he has water in his name. Right? I mean. I know. Which is kind of a theme same. throughout. This happens again, which is weird. <gasps> not, It's not fire, 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 fire. <laughs> <laughs> Something else, but still cool. Uh, yeah. But he was originally buried in an unmarked grave. Which, no. Ugh, 
sadly, kind of a theme around here. More on that later. But in 2015, the students of Madison High School and the Portland Fire Department got a proper marker for Gus. Okay. How, I'm sorry, in what year? 2015. Cool. Mm -hmm. Just like casually decades and decades later. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't write down the specific date he was buried, but it, uh, was not close to 2015. I'll tell yeah. you that. It, correct. <laughs> I have to imagine. <laughs> cool. Ada Smith, who was six when she died in 1885. Oh. She has a beautiful angel statue on her headstone. And at some point, the angel was stolen. <gasps> Dicks. <laughs> I know. But was later found in an abandoned warehouse and has since been restored and returned to Ada. You stole the angel and just like left it somewhere else. Right? I know. I don't know it's like what they plan to do with that. Or to what end? Maybe they just wanted to be dicks and steal a fucking six year old's angel headstone. Like who who are you? I you, you know, she was six years old and died, and that alone is sad enough. Yeah. And wow. Just just trash. But thankfully, it's back with her now. Yay. So the McClay family has a gorgeous mausoleum. In the 1880s, Donald McClay was a well-known investor, real estate developer, and president of the Board of Trade in Portland. And if the name is sounding really familiar to you, that's because the Witch's Castle, which we did an episode on, is located in McClay Park. Okay. Which was I, named after him. Okay. All yeah. right. I thought I thought maybe. I was like, hmm. Somewhere in my little lizard brain. I was something was yeah. wiggling. Big famous Portland family with a big famous Portland mausoleum. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag goals. <laughs> Next we're gonna move on to Julius Caesar. This was not his given name. But, you don't say. Yeah, no. <laughs> but he was born an enslaved person and had the name of the family that enslaved him. So understandably, as a free man, he decided he needed a new name. And he loved reciting Shakespeare. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I kind of love that. Isn't that so fucking cute? Yeah. We're bringing back Shakespeare again. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, because, yeah, you guys, Shakespeare was so out before, <laughs> but we're bringing him back. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> I really meant just because we just talked about no, this, I... <laughs> the sh- Lithia Park. <laughs> yeah. No, but I just really wanted to envision that people were thinking, like, Shakespeare is so out. Yeah. Who is he? <laughs> Ew. He was also a huge sports fan, and the phrase play ball being among his favorite was actually coined by him. What? Apparently, that's what this article says. And he was actually featured in Ripley's Believe It or Not. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. So a local friend he'd made during his lifetime purchased him a headstone. And it has that very phrase engraved on it. Play ball. Yeah. Isn't that so fucking... All of this is so cute. (laughs) It's really cute. Um, unfortunately, though, they misspelled Caesar on his gravestone. Well, <laughs> which, you know, it's a hard word. The, the A and the E are, you know, a little backwards. It's fine. Yeah. But the thought just, was there. Just like one of the most <laughs> famous figures in all of history. But yeah, yeah. It's the thought that counts. Uh-huh. Play ball. Caesar ball. What, what, what are you going to have um, engraved on my headstone? Um, oh, no. I knocked that over. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like given time, I could come up with something better. But I was thinking about this actually. Well, all the time because it's I that's just where we are. Yeah, that's who I am. Uh I was going to say, probably would say, but I digress. <laughs> yeah, that too. That's a good one too. <laughs> you can have a double-sided. Yeah. We'll uh, put both on there. Oh, see, that's very on brand. You're like, she had a lot to say. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're just going to be filled. 
Mine's just going to say, I'm home. <laughs> Mine's going to have stuff that I like half. <laughs> Change my mind. Half thoughts. Yeah. We're going to have like little carrots, like inserting other things I forgot to say. <laughs> it's going to be the best. Oh, don't uh, die anytime soon. Okay. okay. I wasn't planning on it. <laughs> now we have some fun boozy themes here. Oh. James Frush. Frush. F R U S H. Fruit. Frush. Frush. I like Frush. I like Frush. He's Frush now. James. We love your last name. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, but you're fruish. Yeah. I'm going to get me some fruish. fruish. There is a marble urn at his grave. One that actually sat on the bar where he worked as a bartender. Okay. Well, you know, I love that. You know how I feel about marble. Yes. It's very pretty. And during the holidays, it was filled with a drink called Tom and Jerry. A Tom and Jerry is a traditional Christmas time cocktail in the United States, it says. Sometimes attributed to British writer and professional boxing journalist Pierce Egan. Okay, E-G-A-N. I do not think I've heard of this. What is in it? Do we well, know? Well, I'll tell you. Okay. It is a variant of eggnog with brandy and rum added and served hot. Yeah, that that's... Usually I... in a mug or a bowl. Okay. Well, so apparently they filled this marble urn, which like, why do they have an urn filled with booze? Listen, it was an urn, but I was still on board. And where we part ways is the ingredients of this cocktail. I hate eggnog. That is disgusting. Yeah. Does eggnog, like hard eggnog, isn't that like what that is? Oh, it's served hot. So I guess that's a little different. Yeah. I, I do. I, it sounds disgusting. Served hot. Serving it in a mug or a bowl. A bowl? You know what I was picturing? People just like coming under the urn and like, I don't know how they got it uh, out of the urn. No. Probably, they probably had like a ladle or like something. A, yeah, like a punch bowl. And then they spoon. heated it up. But I'm picturing like already hot Mm-mm, people having their mouths under like a drain and like a spigot, draining like- the Tom and Jerry into their mouths. <laughs> the hot... <laughs> eggnog i really Ugh. i'm deeply uncomfortable with either of those scenarios and i just mm-mm. yeah nope. well now i should have made us a freaking tom and jerry for today i'm really glad that you didn't they have eggnog in february right you know actually i have some in my fridge oh i'm sure it's <laughs> totally still good just kidding i don't you drink don't eggnog. eggnog i hate eggnog chris <laughs> likes eggnog Ugh. i know i find that it's honestly his most upsetting character flaw. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) So the saloon where this all happened was actually owned by Colburn Barrel himself. Okay. So after James died, they moved the urn to his grave, but they would bring it back during the holidays to the bar and fill it with Tom and Jerry again to honor him. And I really hope that they cleaned it. I don't think anybody was drinking out of that. I think this was one of those like kind of pour one out for my homies. Yeah. Oh, like an offering type of thing. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. That's what I'm going to go with. Yeah. Well, we should go and bring him a Tom and Jerry. And I know. Do you think people are still like, is someone still doing that? I don't, I don't think they, they definitely don't take it anymore to fill it. And I don't think you could just like leave eggnog sitting out at someone's grave because like animals might get into it you know it's kind of well you know squirrels are you know they're wily maybe you know yeah they need a a stiff drink i don't want to make them sick like when it goes bad (laughs) no i don't know i'm totally kidding (laughs) and you're not supposed to dump like milk on grass or anything so i really don't know where we would put it maybe we just inject it right into the ground what wait what does milk do to grass it can like kill the plants or it like grows no it grows a oh, fungus mold. on it that uh, is harmful to like the animals yeah i don't like it are you ready for the next boozy themed grape? yes please does this one have tequila no okay but the bottler brothers have a pretty big monument they were some of portland's first brewers Okay. Bottler Brothers. Yes. Okay. And I'm like, is it Bottler or Bottler? Because it's 
B O T T L E R. It looks bottler. like bottler to me. Yeah. And I wrote bottler. Really? So did they choose this path or did the path choose them? <laughs> That's a really good question. Yeah. You who know? knows? Their monument is in desperate need of restoration. <gasps> it's kind of all blocked off. The roof's kind of caving in. <gasps> but I have no doubt that Portlandians will show up for this pair of brewers. Brewer brothers. Brewer brothers. Yeah. The bottler brewer brothers. Yes. <laughs> I believe they're raising funds to Aww. to get it all fixed up. So. That'll be cool. Okay, we're moving on. Andrew Johnston and Sarah Francis Wisdom. They were former enslaved people who were self-emancipated. Hey. In the 1840s, they made a home from the from themselves. They did not make a home out of themselves. Oh, God. It's a real Ed Gein vibe there. It's a real gingerbread Ow. house vibe. Mm-hmm. None of it's good. I don't like that. Do you ever think about that? That gingerbread men live in a gingerbread house? No. Made out of the bodies of gingerbread men? Nope. And I'm not going to start now. (laughs) Anyway. Jesus. (sighs) It's February and you've ruined next Christmas. (laughs) With the gross eggnog and the gingerbread. Oh my God. Yeah. The eggnog. Wow. Okay. In the 1840s. They made a home for themselves in Portland, ignoring Oregon's black exclusion laws. I was wondering. Which we heard about in one of Caitlin's cases. I can't remember which Probably a couple of them, but um, Alonzo Tucker. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Alonzo. Alonzo. They owned the first African-American restaurant in Oregon called R&D. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that so cool? I fucking love all of this. Yeah. There is an unmarked Celtic cross. Cemetery records show it was the grave of Alice O'Burl, who was a fancy house sex worker. I like it. They called it a fancy house. Yeah. Like a she's brothel? A, she's a fancy, she's a fancy sex worker. Like an upscale. Yeah. 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 No one really knows for sure, but the story is that. The Celtic cross was donated by her clientele. Okay, well, yeah, it doesn't get a whole lot fancier than that. Yeah, she was a popular one, this Alice O'Burl. Good for you, Alice. But her sister, on the other hand, was not a fan of any of that lifestyle, anything. The donation from the clientele, not a fan. So she had Alice moved to Mount Calvary Catholic Cemetery. Oh, boy, that is a mouthful. And her information was erased from the magnificent marble monument. That not cool. Not cool, Alice's sister. I bet, dude, I bet Alice was like pretty pissed on the other side. Yeah, I'm going to haunt you until you die. Like those were her life choices. And I, I mean, I don't know if she was okay with them, but it seemed like it. There was there was actually a bunch of information on her, but I didn't obviously didn't include it. Like, I don't need you judging me. I'm dead. Yeah. But, you know, so wow. anyway, I thought it was rude, but who yeah, knows? Who knows what sucks. Alice was thinking? But Red. her sister had a stick up her butt. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Kind of a see you next Tuesday. Sorry, Alice's sister, if you're listening. Um, (laughs) The next person we're going to talk about is Emma Merlotten. M-E-R-L-O-T-I-N. Merlotten? Merlotten, maybe? But she went by Anne Janine Tindry Lacalls. Lacalls. I think it's French. It's a very long. Oh, Tind- Tindry. Did I say it? Tindry? Tindry? Tingry? But Tindry sounded better. Huh. T-I-N-G-R-Y. I just feel like that's a whole lot of names that are not yours. And Janine Tindry Lacalls. <laughs> How's the last one spelled? L-E-C-O-Z. It's like two words. Like Le- huh. Lacalls. Lacalls. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of the articles had different variations of this name, which is the long name. So, fair. But this is how it's listed on Find a Grave. So I chose that version. So she was also a Portland sex worker and by all accounts was a very sweet person. 
who helped out in the community a lot. This sucks. And these next couple, like, let me know if we need to cut anything out. If it like steps on any of your true crime toes. Oh, okay. So just let me know. But okay. I didn't go in depth because I right. don't want to. Yeah, because you're like, because ew. <laughs> I'm like skimming, skimming, skimming. Ooh, okay. No, it's, thank you, please. It was awful. Ooh. So she was maliciously murdered with a hatchet at the age of 33. <gasps> yeah, it was, it was, bleh, it was brutal. I did skim it, but it, it was brutal. Yikes. Yeah. Um, and this next part is slightly disturbing, but no, it's a lot disturbing. I don't know r- why I wrote slightly. <laughs> You're like, this is fine. It's okay. You're okay. You're doing great. I mean, they were trying. We'll talk yeah. about it. Okay. This is one I've actually kind of heard of before. I don't know if they did oh. this with another person or what, but I never heard it connected to Portland in this way. Hmm. Um, at the time, it was thought that the last image a person saw could possibly be captured in their eyeballs. Mm-hmm. So they removed one of her eyes to see if they could see who killed her. Yeah. And, and did that work? It unfortunately did not work. Huh. Yeah. Seems but I like, mean, uh, you don't know until you try, right? Yeah. But I feel like we've heard this echoed through various aspects of history. Like, how many eyeballs yeah. do we have to remove before we say, like, I don't think that works. Yeah. And oh. I definitely didn't, like, look up context. I don't know if it had happened before or if they were still trying it or what. I didn't yeah. dig deep because that's not what this is about. Yeah. And also because um, I don't want to. I have a lot of thoughts and yeah. feelings about eyeball stuff. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. At least they, you know, they only did one. They didn't try both of them, I guess. I just, I kind of, I almost don't know if that's better or yeah. worse. I hate it. And I don't know. Who knows, like, what her stance on it would be. Like, hey, like, if it could least, possibly help yeah, catch my killer, like, go ahead and try but, you know, the consent probably wasn't there. So, <laughs> who knows? Yeah. So, have you heard of Charity Lamb? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. I just have, like, a little paragraph. But if anything is in here I need to cut out, let me know. Okay. Oh, no. So, Charity Lamb was the first woman to be convicted of murder in Oregon. And I'm not going to say what she did. We're just going to leave it up to someone else later. Mm-hmm. And was sentenced to a lifetime of hard labor in 1854. Well, Late. the lifetimes were shorter. Yeah. Right? You know? Yeah. Later, she was transferred. Well, I know there's a lot of, like, nuance in this story. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Later, she was transferred to the Oregon Insane Hospital and actually died there in 1879. And then she was buried in the Lone First Cemetery. She's there? She what? is there. Um, okay. I was she's like, there. I'm not 100% if she had a grave marker or not. Okay. Um, right. I thought you were going to say they moved her. And I was like. <laughs> There's a lot of unknowns with this cemetery. <laughs> <You're> um, cool. <laughs> Who because, wants to go to their resting place thinking that it's final? Yeah. You know? You know? <laughs> In 1955, they built the Multnomah County Office Building um, right on top of this area where she was buried. So this makes me think she did not have a marker. Cool. Along with many others from the hospital and other places we'll talk about in a minute. (laughs) Neat. In 2004, the area was excavated and evidence of human remains were found under the building. Yeah, no shit. So they had it demolished and returned back to the cemetery. (laughs) And I was really just wondering, like, what kind of haunted shenanigans was happening in that fucking building. Yeah. 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 Isn't that crazy? Uh, It's funny that you say crazy specifically because (laughs) these are people Mm -hmm. that were literally in an asylum. Yeah. Where if they weren't already crazy, like actually for real, 
living in one of those in an old timey era, I mean, that, that would do it's it. It's not great. It's mm-hmm. not great. None of this is great. And there's a lot more to it. <laughs> <sighs> so do you remember how I said there was kind of like a theme of unmarked graves in the cemetery? This includes 132 to 185. We're not really sure. Patients from the asylum. <laughs> Many families did not come to claim the bodies of their deceased family members. And the head of the hospital, Dr. Hawthorne, which might sound familiar. It does. Why? I'll tell you. (laughs) He ended up paying to have these people buried at the cemetery, which was obviously an expense. Yeah. And to keep things like kind of on the cheaper side and more simple, he just had them buried it's some of some people say they were mass burials yeah like a mass grave some people say there was just no no markers or anything um but it's it's debated on whether this was a nice thing or not because like otherwise where were they going to be buried you know yeah so um some people say he was actually a great doctor and had a lot of sympathy in his practices obviously we know The things that happened in asylums weren't great. No. But maybe there were some people out there trying. You know, it's up in the air. I didn't dig too deep into into it. Right. And anything is possible. Yeah. So. (laughs) But either way, Dr. Hawthorne also resides in Lone Fur. Great. So if he did anything naughty, he has some friends there to help him out with that. (laughs) And he has a beautiful monument. And if that name sounds familiar, Hawthorne Boulevard was named after him. And that's Mm. actually where the hospital was located, which is now it's torn down. But (laughs) yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I was going to say weird because I don't recall ever seeing it. Yeah, Um, it's not there no more. Yeah, (laughs) actually, no one really knows where all of these people were buried. It's speculated that they're in or around Block 14 which is a whole other ass can of worms we're going to open in a minute. Mm, yay. <laughs> the graves may have had markers, but they were probably wooden. And so they've either rotted or like yeah. burned away. So it's possible they were buried, you know, with little wooden markers, but those don't last. Yeah. So I didn't write the year. It was a long time ago, though. <laughs> The Oregonian had an article describing dense rows of asylum burials to the east of Block 14, where the cemetery parking lot is now. Do you know what song I'm thinking of? (laughs) No. What are you thinking? Come on. Paved a parking lot? Uh Paved a paved paradise? Uh Uh-huh. With a parking lot? You know. You know. (laughs) Yeah. You know. Okay. Yeah. So it's possible that there are still people under the parking lot there today. I just, no, thank you. But it does make me think that maybe there was like those wooden markers because in the, in the article they're describing seeing rows of burials. So I don't, I don't know if they're just seeing like mounds or I don't know. I don't know. know. But so we're going to talk about block 14. Block 14 was the Chinese slash Chinese American section of the cemetery. Yes, they disgustingly were separated from everyone else. Yeah. And they they might have been, you know, intermingled with the asylum patients too. It was pretty much anyone who couldn't really pay for a a proper burial. (laughs) Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Let's go ahead and we'll segregate all of these uh, disgusting pores. Yeah. Yeah. Ew. Great. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Gross. Yeah. It's like. It was a time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was a time. (laughs) Most of these people were railroad workers and people who built the foundation of the city pretty much. An estimated 1,100 to 2,800 Again, it's not clear. (laughs) Immigrants were buried here. And 265 of those bodies were moved back home for proper burial, which is great. But only 265 of them. Yeah. 
So awesome. It's awesome they were trying to do something good. I mean, were they or were there just 265 families that actually advocated for their loved ones? Yeah. You know? I don't know. And it was so long ago, like who knows how many of their family members know about them? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. or are still around. But it's getting better. <laughs> are you sure? It is getting better. I swear it was getting worse. It's getting better now. Okay. It's look it's looking up. This section was part of what I talked about earlier that was paved over and the office was built. Um, but since everything has been torn down and returned back to the cemetery, plans are underway for a cultural heritage and healing garden to honor. The- I'm going to cry. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> I wasn't going to cry until I looked at you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I got to say it again. Plans are underway for a cultural heritage and healing garden to honor Chinese immigrants. That's who cool. I fucking guess. built our city. Yeah. Like we're living on shit that someone else built and they were just treated like garbage. But. Yeah. So like I guess if you're like into any of that stuff, like yeah. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but they're also going to honor the patients of the mental hospital as well. Since there's so many that we just like don't know. We don't know what's under there. <laughs> God damn it, Caitlin. You're the one without feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I obviously caught them from you. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a quote from Oregon Metro, who is in charge of taking care of the cemetery. The memorial will be shaped by input from the community and funded through voter approved 2019 Parks and Bond. The memorial is expected to be completed by the end of 2026. So it's taken a little while. Um, It always does. (laughs) This all kind of started like the petitions for this and everything started in like 2008. And it just passed in 2019. It's going to be finished in 2026. Fingers crossed. That seems like actually like incredibly fast. (laughs) (laughs) The quote goes on to say, Racial equity is the core of the bond measure. It prioritizes outcomes that benefit people of color, indigenous people, people with low incomes, people with varying abilities, and other historically marginalized groups who have not benefited equitably from past investments. The bond measure also prioritizes work to make the region more resilient to climate change, which is, that's great too. Awesome. Throw that in there too. I also didn't mention this earlier. I wasn't sure like where kind of to fit it in with the story Mm -hmm. because it had a certain flow. But many bodies from older cemeteries in Portland had to be transferred to Lone Fir due to the marshy earth. So I don't know if you remember any stories of Portland where it was like floody and like bodies were kind of. um, It's a bit soupy. Rising back up. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of riverage in the mm-hmm. city, so yeah, um, yeah. This this land is a little you know more stable. Great. <laughs> so they do have a lot of people who have been moved from other other cemeteries. I'm really glad that I haven't eaten yet today. <laughs> um, is this place haunted? <sighs> Probably. Is that a serious question? <laughs> Probably from all of the shit that I just told you, all yeah. of the displacements, all of the unmarked graves, all of the stolen angel yeah. statues. Just the what the fuck of it all. A lot of things. A lot of things. Most describe seeing kind of misty figures walking across the cemetery during the daytime as well as after dark. Oh, Cool. Some people say they see a younger woman wearing a red dress who is just kind of like walking around the grounds. She doesn't seem to be angry or in pain or anything. She's just kind of walking around, but kind of like oblivious to other people. Just casual. Yeah. Okay. A lot of other people say that they see a shadowy woman dressed in French clothing. 
Ooh, walking around the cemetery like a maid's uniform or no, I'm not like a maid's. It's like... <laughs> why, why, what makes it French? Like French dresses, like that French like fashion. Okay, of the times, okay. you know, back yeah, in like the way back days. Clothing. Okay, <laughs> yeah, period clothing. Yes, is that like period panties? No. Oh, like period of time as in like it like an era it's a red dress maybe it is a period dress <laughs> oh no that was the other wait is this the woman wait where did i get red dress from did i say that you did when <laughs> did you, i mean was that not a part of the story oh it was the first one okay oh, okay it was like you you definitely said it sorry yeah that was the first figure i don't know if they're the same or not First one says a red he's dress. Choosing to make them one in the same. <laughs> anyway, it could be the same woman. Who knows? But this woman in the French dress or French fashion. I assume Frenchy it's French fry. I should. I assume it's a dress. I, I I would think so. Okay. Yeah. Because like people weren't women weren't wearing pants back then. I, I you know, mean, depending on like specifically when. Yeah. Like it was illegal at points in certain parts of the world for women to wear pants. So, so fucking weird. I feel like a dress is a safe pet. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a dress. Yeah. Probably a dress. <laughs> well, when this woman is approached, she like throws her hands up and screams. And then she does her favorite thing. Mm -hmm. She just disappears. I feel like while normally that's not my favorite, I do feel like that is an improvement over the screaming. Yeah, the screaming is hard. That makes me sad. Yeah. Yeah. Screaming dead lady is not my fave. But it could be like, you know, like a dimension, like time slip kind of thing where she thinks you're the fucking ghost. And she's like, oh, fucking ghost and screams. Like I maybe she's not in pain or anything. She's just scared too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a perfectly reasonable explanation that makes me feel better about it you know? well i'm glad that that helps you <laughs> <laughs> there weren't a lot of other accounts of hauntings here mostly just you know the misty things the figures feeling of being watched that kind of thing there is another story that has been repeated in some articles it was originally from reddit and it was someone describing Something that might not have been a ghost. <laughs> Something that yeah. is maybe just easily explained as being Portland. Um, I really okay. want to read this, though, in a Patreon bonus because <gasps> the Ooh. thread is fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny. Um, so I want to read that. I don't want to okay. include that story as part of this because I I don't think it was a haunting just a, just a bit off topic yeah okay yeah, i don't think it, it was relevant but i love that for us i want to read it for patreon so we'll do that not today but i'll put it together another time and oh okay and we'll do that say, yeah. but like let's go <laughs> i do uh i do wonder though with the remodel of the healing garden and stuff like yeah. what what's gonna come up because you know ghosts kind of get more active when things are changing yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if it's necessarily like going to be bad things that are happening, but it might just be a little more active sure. while they're they're building the memorials. Okay. Yeah. So everyone go visit right now while it's at its uh, most active. Or, or, <laughs> or don't. Or, or just stay home and just wear cozy sweaters and your Ugg slippers and, um, you know, drink wine on your couch. I'll go. I might be going soon because I See did <laughs> a very spooky Cassie thing to do. Yeah. I am now a photo volunteer on Find a Grave. Ah. So they they need people to take pictures because, they you know, they track like every yeah. single grave. And yeah. some people kind of request to have certain graves photographed okay. and whatnot. So, OK, well, great. Now that I know that. I have a list that you can start working through. Um, I'll <laughs> for get you, that too. for your personal use. Well, I mean, in connection with the podcast, but obviously they yeah. might be on Find a Grave, but I could probably take a better picture. Yeah. Also, that I also am thinking about uh, volunteering to help clean headstones and stuff. 
They have a lot of volunteer opportunities. You can, they have a class that like teaches you how they have mm-hmm. tours at this place. Mm-hmm. Um, everything's on their website. You can find things, but they have different types of tours to learn about the history and the people. And then during the, like Halloween time, they have special, like kind of spookier tours. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's I'm going to cool. need advance warning if you start <laughs> hosing down graves. Um, if- if you become a grave janitor, I feel like the needs of my home um, for, I just need to know ahead of time. I'm going to, it's going to involve a lot of crystals and herbs. I'll be protected. And- I will be, pro- I know how to protect myself. I will make sure nothing follows me home. I know. But what I'm worried about is that despite your desire to interact, it doesn't want you. It wants to get to me because they're like, she'll cry like a little girl. Well, if they can't attach to me, they can't get to you. Okay. I'll just, I won't think about you all while I'm there. They won't even know about you. Yeah. She doesn't trust me. You're like, you're in the witness protection program, but you're like in the ghost protection (laughs) program. (laughs) (laughs) You know, we're going to workshop it because I feel like it's, there's something there. It's not quite, we're not there yet. Yeah. Whatever. No one tell any ghosts about Caitlin's existence. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Well, should we do some tarot? Yeah. I'm excited. Let's do Me some too. tarot in our cute little graveyard altar. It's very cute. We have a special candle. We do. <laughs> it's the, what is it? Cemetery Stroll? Cemetery Stroll from the Mythic Wick. Mythic. Where? I said it right. Yeah. Thank you, Jocelyn. As indie podcasters, we love to show our support of other awesome shows. So stay tuned for the promo we've got to share with you this week. Let's show them some love. You can find their info in our show notes. This is That's So Fucked Up, a podcast about cults, murder, and other fucked up stuff. Like, really, really fucked up stuff. He tore out her heart, tied it to a rope, and hung it on the wall. Fucking sharks ate Mark under the dinghy. After his dad dies, he fucking marries all his dad's oh, wives. Oh, yeah. He, like, marries all his stepmoms. <laughs> I'm your host, Ashley Love Richards. Find That's So Fucked Up anywhere you listen to podcasts. That's fucked up. You guys, we're We're back. back. And don't worry, we did get more wine. Well, of course. We're here at the tarot. We're back. We're back. We have lit our beautiful cemetery stroll candle. It smells like grass and rain it smells like what does it say i think grass and rain (laughs) it smells like an impromptu walk through the cemetery in the rain how cute is my little cemetery i know you can't see some of the headstones but that's what the pictures are for (sighs) here we go Okay, do you guys want to help me pick? Send me all your energy from the future. Okay, well, this one, like, came out, but... Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. Well, we got the star in reverse, and then the queen of cups. Oh. (gasps) Okay, I kept seeing that card. I did, too. As I was shuffling. Isn't that weird? I was seeing it, too, while you were shuffling, and while I was shuffling. Okay. Oh, and I turned right to it. So, oh, okay. There we go. Our keywords are creativity, fertility, strong emotion, change, and intuition. Usually, the Queen of Cups appears seated on a throne wearing a crown and lovely garments. A beautiful woman, she exudes warmth, sensuality, and maternal caring. Oh, like the sex workers. Oh, and they were like sweet too. Yeah, and okay. dressed in nice clothes, or like one of the ghosts at least was. You know, the nice French thing. French wear. 
In a reading, the queen may signify an actual person. When she does, it's usually a mature woman who's creative, nurturing, changeable, intuitive, devoted as a wife or mother, and highly emotional. Sometimes a drama queen. Oh, sounds like me today. Yeah, I feel like it's just picking up our energy. <laughs> it's like ah, chaos. All right. The upright queen represents deep emotions, compassion, and caring. When she comes up, you're experiencing strong feelings about someone or something. She can also urge you to use your intuition to express your creativity. If this card signifies a real person, she's nurturing and generous, a mother figure. Ruled by her heart, not her head. She's changeable and sometimes unreliable. Hmm. Okay, interesting. There's an extra excerpt, and then I'll read the three um, bullet points. For okay. Hmm. The Queen of Cups is like a body of water, ever flowing onward as she brings inspiration and feeling to the world. Though she may sometimes seem as mutable as the sea itself, she is ever true to her heart. Oh, I like that. It's yeah. always like reminding me of the change that's going on in the, why am I doing this? I don't, I don't know, know what I'm doing, but <laughs> the change for the memorial, you know, it's very, yeah. very emotional for a lot of people. And there's a lot of, I'm, I assume a lot of intuition involved in that and creativity and wow. yeah. In a reading about money, the queen can mean earning money from a creative activity. Earning money for? Raising money uh, for, maybe? Uh, yeah, or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Often, she recommends being flexible and willing to make changes. Mm -hmm. Use your intuition as well as your intellect in financial matters. I wonder how many times the like the plans had to be changed and, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I feel like that's a good point. If the reading is about your job, this can be a creative and inspired time for you. To be happy, you need to be able to use your imagination in your job. Sometimes the queen shows unreal, an unrealistic attitude about work or a desire to be taken care of rather than working. Hmm. In a reading about love, the upright queen represents a deeply romantic, sensual, and emotional relationship. All like if all of your clients like paid for um uh yeah uh, your memorial headstone yes yeah words are hard and the couple mm -hmm. holding hands forever yeah with the not creepy headstone yeah with the <laughs> headstone yeah of indeterminate <laughs> creepiness <laughs> If this card signifies a real person, she's probably manipulative. Oh, I, oops, I started to skip down into the reverse. Damn, I was like, whoa, this took a turn. <laughs> yeah, it really did. <laughs> um, <laughs> you open yourself to a partner and lavish him or her with love. Sometimes the queen advises you to be more discriminating. This is a fortunate card if you want to have children. I don't think any of these people are having any I, children I anytime think, soon. Yeah. <laughs> probably, probably not. It Just, was kind of reminding me, though, like all of the, there was a lot of people who purchased headstones or like graves for other people. Yeah. You know what There I mean? was a lot of caretaking yeah. on, on the part of others. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, that, it, it was like giving me that vibe. Like, I know it was yeah. like talking about a couple, but you know. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know that it necessarily is exclusive to that, though, either. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the vibe. Hmm. Oh, you're going to love this. Oh, yay. Yay. Okay. I think <laughs> um, the star keywords are happiness, hope, light at the end of the tunnel, which that is some powerful imagery associated with death. Yeah, it to come up in this reading. It is. I kind of like. What is that guy too? Is that the morning dove? I can't remember. Oh, I think you're right. I think you're it, right. I, I know it's on one of the cards we've gotten recently, but okay. Hope, 
which whispered from Pandora's box only after all the other plagues and sorrows had escaped, is the best and last of all things. Wow. Yeah. I love that quote. It is a morning dove, which is fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we got this in the reverse, but there is another extra excerpt. Optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence. Which there was a lot of people fighting to get this, Cassie. get these people memor- memorized, remembered. Yeah. Memorialized. Yeah. Yeah. They needed a lot of hope and persistence. You're going to shit. Remember how they had taken one of her eyes? Oh, yeah. Do you want to guess who that quote is from in the second excerpt? I I don't know. It's Helen Keller. Oh, weird. Interesting. (laughs) Okay, and then here's the reverse. Trust life and its process and yourself. The reverse star can mean you're following your path in a private way instead of shining your light into the outer world. Hmm. The blessings you receive may be spiritual rather than material. So, yeah, all these people are just buried in the dirt. Yeah. Privately. Which... Perhaps you feel devitalized, uninspired, or low on self-esteem at this time. Oh. After you attune yourself to what your soul needs, you'll feel more energized and in harmony with who you truly are. Wow. This is really cool. In a reading about money, you may feel disappointed because... A hoped-for payment or payoff gets delayed. (laughs) Just a couple of years, you know, 2008 to 2026. Yeah, after being dead for almost a year. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Even though you're trying hard, your efforts don't bear much fruit. The, The time may not be right yet. Don't give up. I hope it's right right now. Yeah, it seems it seems like now we're in the final stages. I hope this, so. so. I don't know if they've actually started like construction yet. Like if anything's really underway. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen any. The last pictures I see are like a sign of like this is what's coming. Yeah. Anyway, we get there eventually. You Gosh, know? yeah. If the reading is about your job, you may be hiding your light under a bushel. Okay. (laughs) Perhaps you don't realize your true abilities and thus aren't getting ahead as quickly as you could. The star reversed can also represent disillusionment, disenchantment, or lack of inspiration. In a reading about love, this card can mean your expectations are unrealistic. You're searching for perfection, which can never be attained. Or... It can indicate you aren't seeing your partner or relationship clearly. I feel like this interpretation, I'm the first two bullet points are speaking to me. I think the uh, the stuff about the perfection stuff, like they're yeah. never going to, unfortunately, they're probably never going to find everybody and like who all of these people are because they yeah. don't even know where some of them are. Some of them are under the yeah parking lot. Like they're never going to have perfection in this situation, but they're building something. They're yeah. doing something, but it's it's not going to be perfect. But. Yeah. And I mean, I think just by virtue of this project being necessary, like you can say, yeah, it's not going to be perfect because, you know, we didn't do maybe the best things to begin with yeah so now it's all about you know what is going to be the best remedy yeah yeah oh that was so perfect wow even though I like struggled talking hopefully (laughs) that wasn't too hard for everyone to listen to listen sometimes your brain hurts and that that's all you know in that moment 
I think I can't remember if I did I read this one last time we got it. Should I just read it again? I don't know if I if I could say for sure. <laughs> oh. But, well, yeah, now you have to read it, obviously. This is interesting that it says that word. Okay. okay. Dove was most at home in the sky. He had taken flight at dawn. From darkness, filled with trepidation and fear, he flew toward the bright beacon above the horizon. Dove's wings kept him aloft in the into the daylight through the forest valley and wasteland heading over toward that morning star still shining in the distance as dove journeyed his heart lightened he felt echoes of past pilgrims oh which is interesting pilgrims because they were like all like pioneer cemeteries you know to begin with yeah i don't know if that's like the same type of thing Listen, I'm just going to say that's a it's an it's interesting that that specific word is inserted there. Yeah. Yeah. His path intertwined with those of other travelers. He left his fear behind. He we he I I did read this before because I struggled on this one, too. (laughs) He wheeled joyously in the sky and skimmed above the clouds, flying higher than he had any right to. He tested the boundaries of himself and the world he inhabited. A part of him hoped that he would never reach the star, not wanting to not wanting the journey to end. The rest of him wondered what will happen when he got there. That's really interesting. (laughs) Yeah, that's very indicative of the afterlife. Yeah. Wow. That's so weird. It like is still hitting me that we got the morning dove. Yeah. Wow. Hey, did you like listening to that tarot read? Yeah. Do you want to see it with your eyeballs? I mean, I did, but yeah. Maybe that was a poor choice of words after this episode. Anyway, if you want to see it, it's on our Patreon. And we did a full moon oracle card pull from my moon deck. What's it called? My moon oracle deck. Yeah. Just for Patreon this week. They also get the ad free version of the episode. But you might be asking yourself, what is Patreon? Patreon is a monthly subscription with a range of price points and benefits. Every member of our Patreon gets a personalized welcome card and a shout out in an upcoming episode, as well as exclusive bonus episodes and so much more, including the mini tarot reading that goes into the welcome card, which we frequently forget to mention uh, when we talk about the welcome card. But that's in there. Also, there's still time if you join in February and you stay for two months, you get a self-love spell jar. You get Ooh. our creepy people stickers. Yeah. All the information is on there. They'll tell you like what tiers get them and stuff. Yeah. And we did talk about a bonus episode for this one. You've talked about a bonus you're doing. There's just a lot of bonuses coming There's up. a lot of bonusy bonuses. All the bones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are also going to be doing some fun cold reading. We're going to be reading to you. From a book called Born to be Weird, Demented Fantasy and Bizarro Horror. And we're going to be doing it On. from a walk-in freezer. <laughs> <laughs> um, That part is not true. Cold but... reading. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'll just not turn on the heat before you come over. Is okay. that cool? Yeah, I'll bundle up. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, no. But that's something we're going to be doing for the Patreon coming up here. We're just mixing it up, doing some fun, fun fun things. Yeah, we like fun things. Yeah. If you have any stories, we're still doing Creepy People Chronicles. So send them in, true crime, paranormal, witchy stories to pnwhauntsandhomicides at gmail.com. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Wow. Look at that. She nailed it. That was like. It came out so fast. I was not sure if I actually said it correctly. Yeah. (laughs) Buddha. (laughs) <laughs> we also have a Google contact link in the episode description and our link tree and website will be in there as well. So you can find us on all the socials and all the things. Oh, yeah. And I forgot to say it when you were talking about that story on Reddit, but we're on there. Yeah, we're on the Reddits. We're on 
the Riddits. Caitlin likes to get karma. I have no idea what this means. I know. But I think it's a good thing. It really speaks to me. <laughs> <laughs> karma is... It's kind of like points. Oh, like, I was going Taylor Swift. Karma is my boyfriend. Kinda? Karma is a cat on my lap. What else is yeah. karma? Yeah, I mean, it's that. The breeze through my hair on the weekend. Yeah. Is that part of it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Reddit does transact directly with um, warm, pleasant breezes. Warm, pleasant Taylor Swift lyrics. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's facts. Have, Have a, a creepy, creepy ass, ass day. day. See you next, See you next Tuesday. Tuesday. Or, you know. All right. Well, don't go burying any bodies uh, unmarked in cemeteries because we just shouldn't do that to anybody anymore. Mm, yeah. No, I don't think so. Like, even if they're a like shitty person, serial killer, I still want their grave marked because like, you don't want to be building shit on top of that. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, maybe still it's a good idea because like who wants to build their house on that? No. Nice. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. I wonder how many buildings no, are on I, top of bodies I, right This now. one, for sure. It's on something. <sighs> it's on something I don't like. Oh, my God. Are we doing it? Did we do it? Is it over? Bad news. Not over. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's, it's a Taylor Swift song. Is it over now? <laughs> oh, um, I don't know. <laughs>